What's going on people? Welcome to Punchy 7 Works and today we are having a look at this, something different. This is Justin Pollack's JTP's 2020 Ford Mustang drift car that he competed in the Formula Drift season with in 2020. It's basically, it's been commissioned I guess, or, or like made as by, by, by the guys over at Link ECU. See there in the back kind of left, just above the, just, just in front of the rear wheel, the Link ECU logo. So as far as the stats, it has 876 horsepower, which honestly surprised me. Like I thought it would be up with the thousand horsepowers of the, of the world that we have nowadays in, in Formula Drift, but now they're kind of relatively kind of like modest and only 876 horsepower brake horsepower uh, but yeah next up it has 1165 newton meters of torque so again i've forgotten in the last two now even when i mentioned forgetting it in the video beforehand i still forgot it in that video so we will make sure this time to absolutely put the conversions up on the screen yeah so 1165 newtons, newton meters i'll put up what it is in foot pounds of torque which is something that i and maybe others might be more familiar with. then lastly it weighs 1356 kilos again same thing conversion into pounds uh, will be on the screen so yeah pretty powerful fairly light and a fair old chunk of torque like <laughs> so we shall see how it gets on hopefully it's fun that's the biggest thing this is never about my skill it's not about seeing if i can do backwards entries i'll probably try but uh, it's mostly just about seeing how how fun the car is how it handles if it's if it's fun to drive and that kind of stuff it comes as a four pack it also has dylan hughes's e46 uh, bmw fruit cougars s14 and it has jeff jones 370z which are all really cool when it comes to these drift packs like i could obviously do individual videos on all three of them but i think about the way that i'll do it going forward is to just pick one car the car that i like the most uh, or that i think would be the most kind of the one that people want to see the most out of the pack and try that basically for the review so it looks amazing it does like it's not be, like it's been made by like the credits are there the the, the modeling the animations and the sounds and all that have been credited so i, I don't know if it's something that Link ECU picked up on or if they specifically had a commission to be made for this pack for a competition that they were putting on but either way looks super high quality from the outside as you can see there it looks fantastic the inside from at least on the screen from back here looks amazing as well so I'm really hoping that it passes the VR test and speaking of which if you don't know what we do here after a few little beauty shots what we do is we take the car out on track this time on Silverstone National which is basically the old fours kind of competition layout around the S's and yeah essentially you see how it, how, it, how it performs in VR see if all the kind of interior bits match up to kind of what we expect in VR nowadays like good quality nice shadows nice shading good textures materials and that kind of stuff next up we do a sound test so obviously this big american v8 the b8 motor as jimmy says see if uh, it has that, that that good good sound and yeah then lastly we take it for a couple of rips um obviously normally in this series i take it out for a lap of the norberg ring or in the uh, case of like open wheel f1 cars and stuff like that a couple of laps of the uh, silverstone gp layout but in this case we're gonna just do a couple of laps, uh, a couple of laps like five to ten runs back and forward kind of getting a feel for the car and just seeing what i think about it and um, so that's about it meet you over on the track Okay, so here we are in the cockpit. First impressions, not the worst. Once again, this thing that I've become to expect with the shading and the shadows, it just looks very flat. Like there's no, that like I can't tell really easily that them pedals are down far away. Like they're not hidden in shadows the way they should be when we're in the shadow of a building. And then there's the shadows of the interior bits of the cars. There's just been some higher quality mods that I've seen, some really top mods and like um, some Kunos cars and stuff like that that have that little level, extra level of detail and shadowing in the cars. But in general, it looks really good, really solid. The wheels looking a little flat is the only thing that I know the wheel isn't looking great but the link ecu computer there looking good the four bits overall it just looks a little bit kind of as i said flat like it's a bit there's not really any variance any good variance or realistic variance in the materials inside the car but it's got the handbrake it's got the hydraulic handbrake it's got the sequential shifter yeah like it has a lot of the details you can actually see the link ecu <laughs> The box, so you know they've they've made sure that they've gotten their stuff in there. Yeah, you can see the box down in the in the, in the thing, which is pretty cool. But uh, next up, we go for the sound test. So let's have a listen. It's an interesting sound. It's not as again with a V8 and especially like a Ford V8. Oh, that was weird. What happened, what happened there? Oh, that sound isn't great. When it gets down towards the very end of the RPM thing, it like snaps back into the idle sound. Like, so that's not the most, uh, not the most ideal. But yeah, as I was saying, the sound, like I always expect it to be like a lot more grumbly and stuff. Oh, the pedal's animated. 
Oh, that's cool. That's a cool touch. That's not something that you ever see, you see a whole lot. They've had to make the pedals. And, like, not just on and off. Like, all the way down is all the way down. Only lightly pressed. Brake as well. Like, little movements are all the way down. That's brilliant. Gear as well. Handbrake, I wonder. Oh, <laughs> That is amazing. I've never seen that before. Now I see why they credited the animators. That's brilliant. That's a cool nice little surprise. But back to the sound. Good. No complaints about it. It's just not what I expected. For some reason I expected it to sound a lot more um, rumbly and kind of like, again, American muscly V8 rather than more of a sports car V8. So nothing nothing wrong with that. It's just that my expectations were different. As well. And it does also have that issue with the, um, just when it's coming back to, when it's coming back to idle, that quick snapback. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit quick, but we shall take it out and see how it goes. Now this is on the stock tune as ever. Oh, it feels very stiff already. That's weird. I'm just gonna drive around to the start point of the section. I can feel like the steering is. I can already feel the steering wheel is gonna, or the steering is gonna be pretty solid, as in like hard and stiff. Like it's feeling very stiff off the bat. Right, so we are gonna warm up the tires a little bit. Mm, interesting characteristics on the warm up anyway. Warm up the front tires a little bit and we get to the start line. So if you don't know what we do here this is based on the old Forza Motorsport competitive section so it's going to be 50 roll until the end of that green strip there to your right and then basically you're going from there and enter in and yeah let's see how we get on. Not my smoother start. Holds angle like a monster. <laughs> My line was atrocious because again, first first ever run in the car, you don't know how to how it's gonna handle. But okay, all right. It's definitely got a solid base to work off of. I can see that much. So basically, yeah, it's just a case of now turning it around. There's no fifty roll on this side. You just kind of gun it. This is where you go for the big entries and stuff. See if you can handle it. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how to drive it just yet. <laughs> so, we'll be blaming the car for that one just yet. I messed up the the, uh, the initial entry as well. It feels pretty good so far. Like there's certain cars that have this weird, horrible counter snappiness to them or something like that. It doesn't seem to have that. Just seems that like it just it's just just for my sake I haven't gotten used to it just yet, so uh, I'm up on the front rumble a bit. Yeah, absolutely not the worst. I can definitely see like getting used to it within a couple of minutes. Like within like like definitely if I drop this in for an hour or three, I think I'll be ripping in it by the end. Which can't be said for a lot of drift mods, unfortunately, so <laughs> Again, just feeling out, feeling out different entry attempts, different different entry styles. Different flicks. That was a nice one there, just letting the wheel completely rotate by itself. Hmm, really good. Obviously then, because I'm using the stock tune, like having a little mess around with the tune, obviously to my own personal style a bit. Could obviously help another bunch as well, so. I think that was the wrong, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I went at the wrong green, but, well, green bit. Ah, I'm having trouble with that initiation. It's interesting. It feels like you can basically just hold your foot flat out. Like, once you get it locked into position, it seems like you can just basically hold flat down on the accelerator. And it won't kill you for it. I'm also trying to get one full run all the way through without a face full of fog and steam where I can actually see the corners all the way through. I'm going to keep it in third for this one. 
Ah, I'm messing with that corner a lot. Oh, that responded nicely. <laughs> yeah, I definitely went at the wrong green spot last time, so we'll try this again. Ah, it's really weird. I feel like I know what to do, it's just about doing it properly. <laughs> That's poor. Okay, we'll go from an outside view now and see how we get on because uh, I often tend to find I try to drift a little bit better when I can see everything that's going on from the outside, so. Should be a third gear now. Well, that wasn't better. <laughs> right, so that wasn't better. But uh try this now. Obviously I'm gonna have to just guesstimate at the fifty or so. <laughs> So that's infinitely better on the first corner. A little bit rumble. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm a lot happier with that one, yeah. That was much better first one. Yeah, I think I was just getting the angle of attack wrong there. Much better. That's obviously so much better. I think I was just getting the angle. Like again, the first couple of laps warming it up, getting to find out how to uh, where to initiate in that. Getting the feel for the car, but I think I've gotten a bit. getting a good feel of the car but I think I've gotten it now so right we're in second gear I did say I would try for a backwards entry <laughs> a little gangster flick on the way in yeah uh, trying to get trying to get a little fancy with it now see that's the problem <laughs> But the thing is, the car is good enough that it's uh, given me the confidence that I can. So that's that's important. As I said, it's never, as I always say, it's never about my personal skin, skin, skill. Um, it's about what the car can do and how the car feels. And it feels good enough that I feel like if I can do it myself, like if my skill lets me, uh, lets me do it, the car is able for it. Ah. <laughs> And again, as I said, with the stock tune, you're going to have that issue as well. So. Right, we may go for one last big entry attempt. Overall, I like it. I can absolutely see myself making up a nice little uh, 137 works purple livery for this. But uh, we will go a little bit early to try and... Get the flick. Ah, oh, we've gone. <laughs> okay, so we'll go for one last entry. Um, overall, I love the car. I really think I can get used to it. I'm definitely looking forward to trying out Dylan Hughes Z46 because I think that just looks amazing. And um, like this is the kind of car that I could see myself spending a lot of time in, a lot of time on, adjusting the tune to my own liking, like giving it a 137 works purple and pink livery. It's that good, basically. It's really enjoyable. 
We're gonna go for a big boy. <laughs> away from the jungle. The jungle. The rumble. And then, as ever, the last one in reverse. Let's see what we can do. Miles off the line, but you know, we went for the style more so than the. We we're going for style score points more than the angle and speed there. Angle line and speed, I should say. Okay, as a send off to my first ever drift car on one of these mod review videos, I'm going to do an, I'm going to attempt to do an all fours classic, which is basically gunning it full speed down the straight on a Silverstone GP, flicking it into the right under the bridge and flicking it into the left into the uh, first corner there. At full speed, let's see how we get on. I don't have high hopes, but Leroy Jenkins, <laughs> let's go. I'm trying to not have it straight, uh, drifting in the lead up. Because you want to have as much speed as possible. I mean, if it ends up being <laughs> a 260, I'll take it, but uh, no, nah, in the end, neither. <laughs> it's been a long time since I attempted one of those, so. Sure, look. The car is a beast. I'll leave the link in the description to try out. Um, and I recommend that you do try it out. It's absolutely class. It's re like for free and like to be uh, like to be made by the guys at Link. It's just awesome. So Captain VR face here says <laughs> that is about it. The car is class. It's really really fun. Definitely recommend it. And the other train the pack should be just as good. So I can't wait to try those out. But that's about it. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. Thanks for watching. And goodbye.